time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's an exciting turn coming up. I know the game's been seeming pretty one-sided. There were a lot of situations where it could have gone very differently. Uh, Sonny's Titans definitely are still a factor. Junior's still out there. Um, but Betty Crocker is definitely dominant, and I would, it would be an upset if he lost at this point. I thought for a moment about maybe um, calling it, uh, just because, but I, I think it, it'll be fun to see uh, the hows, uh, even if, if, if the um, what's, which is the conclusion, is already, already seems determined. And, you know, I don't know this game well enough to, at, at all. I mean, I'm, I've learned a lot about it through playing it this one time, but um, I don't know enough to call it at this point. So we're going to continue, and we could see a, a, a really exciting upset, or we could see uh, an interesting victory that, that we kind of already expected. First turn in the round, and Betty Crocker gets to go first, um, and he is not wasting time. He's, he did a lot of maneuvering, um, moved the ships from here through this warp point to here, also moved some other ships into there. It looks like he's preparing an attack uh, straight up the middle. At the same time, he's threatening the, the I guess from our perspective, the right side of um, Betty Crocker's empire, and that's Betty Crocker's strongest side. He's got four colonies there. That's his biggest cluster. These three are kind of all spread out. Um, so it's going to be tough for Betty Crocker to react. He's, he's kind of divided in his forces. His strongest forces are here, as we've talked about before. I don't remember what he purchased there because I did it a little bit ago. Um, he also moved the legendary raiders with their elite raid, uh, raider apprentice and uh, six scouts uh, through this war point here. So he's kind of got a lot of coverage going on, threatening a lot of different areas, especially since he can move two, which other people can't. Um, though I guess Junior can at the end. He also took a new colony from Sonny right here, which is rough on him, but it was kind of a foregone conclusion. There wasn't a lot protecting it, um, and so it fell pretty quickly. Uh, Betty Crocker's troops in this area, though, are, are starting to dwindle. He doesn't have a whole lot, so it would be difficult for him to continue invasions. He has three infantry, I think, maybe two. Two, yeah, because they lo you lose one once you colonized somewhere, uh, three marines and a, a grab armor, so not not a ton going in there. So he might just have to keep hold of this with, with these fellows and then um, watch the rest of Sonny's empire crumble. Junior responded by withdrawing most of the forces from this nebula here down the MS pipeline uh, back to the homeland. Um, but he left a destroyer to go forward on a suicide mission just to see what this home fleet consisted of. And so we can see what he can see. Oh, but before that he moved the Praxis fleet over just in case because he figured he could get them back again in time if this uh, colony was threatened. So there's a battleship, a scout, two transports with a bunch of troops, a raider, another scout, <laughs> six destroyers, and the flagship. So, not the most impressive force that Betty Crocker could muster, but it still could cause problems. Uh, again, all he has to do is survive a, a two turns and then the troops drop. And then the home world will probably fall. Sonny's confronted with a more intensified version of what he's been experiencing in all game, which is, uh, well not all game, but since his borders got invaded by Betty Crocker. That is just too much to deal with, really, with the forces he has at hand. So he's kind of forced to just kind of sit, or at least in his mind, he's forced to just kind of sit, which is very frustrating for him. Um, you know, he's got, you know, three decent fleets going, the Bringers of Pain, the Bringers of Fear, and the Bringers of Sorrow, all can pack a punch, but he doesn't know if any one of them could, like, could even take on this group right here. Uh, so... And if he moves one, then that's going to leave one of his colonies uh, unprotected. So he's favoring the homeland. He's keeping two fleets there. They can also protect this uh, because of the um, reaction movement. And then the Bringers of Pain are just sitting on this, this final arm here, which very well could fall this turn, um, depending on what Betty Crocker plans to do. He might try to even assault this, but that's going to be harder for him to muster uh, this round of turns. Betty Crocker's on the attack again. It really just seems like it's a matter of time before this game is over. He's striking here.
bringers of pain rush in to try and protect the colony. I mean, that's about all Sonny can do at this point, he feels. I mean, that's debatable. You could maybe think of something else you could do. Betty Crocker's also sent his battle fleet in here, is advancing the home fleet, getting close to, to Junior's home world. So here's this first combat, how it shakes out. You can see Betty Crocker has the numbers and maybe the strength, debatably. The Titan's good, but we have the legendary raiders here. Titan can't even shoot at them and because they're three levels ahead until he gets rid of everything else. And the Titan only gets to shoot twice a turn. There is this uh, elite fighter brigade and the veteran flagship here, but those aren't that powerful, although they can shoot at the legendary raiders. So this game is like a massive um, game of paper, rock, scissors, a very complicated paper, rock, scissors that's not uh, deterministic because you have die rolling and all that. But there's a lot of bluffing and there's a lot of like this beats that, but this beats that generally, or this is good against that. Um, I point that out because it's an observation about the game, uh, but also because it comes into play here in an interesting way. So um, Betty Crocker has these scouts here. They're supposed, they're, if they have the point defense technology, that's like the rock against the fighter's scissors here. Uh, point defense lets them attack. Normally scouts aren't very good, but they're good against fighters if they have point defense. Um, however, these scouts, since they're green scouts, are not able to even shoot at the fighter because the fighter is elite and that's three levels higher. So they can't attack anything that's th uh, three levels higher unless all other valid targets are gone. So that's too bad for Betty Crocker in this fight and should give um, Sunny a little bit more of a chance, though not too much of one. Sunny's colony on Halder was destroyed pretty easily. The only cost was a few destroyers, not these, these. Uh, well, several destroyers. I think there were six there, so four destroyers. So, I mean, Betty Crocker did suffer a loss, but on the bright side for Betty Crocker, he destroyed this colony, but other than that, the um, legendary raider group five the Apprentice, which was another raider that was elite, made it into their ranks. So now there are six legendary raiders in Legendary Raider Group 5. Betty Crocker's battle fleet, which consists entirely of destroyers, um, lots of destroyers actually. Uh, how many? Six? Eight? Oh, some scouts. I don't know why I said entirely. Fourteen. Twenty. 26 ships in this battle fleet made short work of the Ares barren planet. It was not barren. It was barren, but now uh, then it became unbarren, and now it's barren again because of Betty Crocker's battle fleet with all its destroyers and its six scouts. Uh, the, the conclusion of the game seems more and more inevitable, but let's give Junior a chance. Let's give Sonny a chance. They're not dead yet. They're still here. Look at them. They're still here. Having seen what the home fleet consists of uh, due to the destroyer's suicide mission, uh, Junior has decided to sit, hope that the Logos fleet can hold on through this turn. He doesn't even know if the home fleet can get there. Um, and has turned the Praxis fleet around in order to try and take on the battle fleet so that it doesn't just eat up all of his resources. If he has any hope, continuing he needs these colonies to be intact um he also needs his home world to be intact but he kind of split the difference he also moved forward with his gnosis fleet uh there was a mine there but luckily he had a sweeper and i guess these probably all get revealed sweeper a couple destroyers a carrier and three fighters so he's going to try and do something with that on his next turn it is very possible this is going to be the last turn of the game. It's Betty Crocker's turn. He's attacking in three spots of varying cruciality. So here he's facing off against the entirety of what Sonny has left, pretty much. I mean, Sonny still has some mild defenders in each of these locations. Um, but his whole fleet is here, bringers of fear, bringers of sorrow, taking on the legendary raiders and their friends, their amazing friends, along with some scouts, which will help against the fighters that are along with the bringers of sorrow. He's also moved his home fleet into... Um, the homeland of, of Junior. We'll do that fight next. And I think I'll probably roll all these out in front of you, because I'm sure you want to witness this momentous occasion. Um, 
he, he could lose that one, in which case, I mean, the game goes on. But if, I'm going to say if he beats Sonny here and beats Junior here, we're just going to end it because there's really no way Sonny's going to come back and Junior's out of the game if he wins there. Uh, he also put forth his battle fleet, which is all those Dreadnoughts and a few Scouts. So let's go ahead and do this battle here. And the Legendary Raider's going to go first. And so do the Scouts and these Dreadnoughts. I think the Scouts are going to go first and try to get rid of these fighters here. And the Scouts attack at A7, I think. Let me double check. A7. So they have an 8 against the fighters 1, so 7 or better. They're probably going to win. That's 1. We'll see if they can level. They don't. That's 2. Let's see if they can level. They don't. Okay, so the fighters are gone. That means the Titan can now be attacked. Um, there's 4 more scouts to fire. What are they going to shoot at? I guess... Oh, and they get another plus 1 because they double. Oh, well, didn't matter. Um, I think they'll go against the destroyers just because they can maybe kill them. Uh, I'm going to roll. I'll do 1 at a time. So it's 4 against 1, 3 or better. That's 1. Let's see if they made a level on that. And they did not. Two, miss. Three, miss. Four, miss. Oh, four hit. All right, so that's going to do it for another destroyer. See if they made a level. I didn't say they need a three or better. It's kind of odd. If their hull is bigger than yours, you get a plus one to your roll, or a plus one to your difficulty or minus one to roll, however you want to look at it. Um, the scouts are one is printed, but they're actually not. So they're like a hull strength of zero or a half. So we'll say they three or better make a level. They don't. All right, I'm glad I explained all that for them not to make a level. Now let's go with the legendary raiders. They're going to attack the titan, and they get the plus one for their cloaking. Plus one for fleet bonus, plus one for being legendary, and plus one for attack technology. So they're at nine minus three, which is six or better. And I'll roll them in groups of three because they're not going to make a level anyway. That's one hit. Not the best luck. Teddy Carpenter did have very good luck on his last last uh, attack. I don't know if I pointed that out. And that's two. So they got a two more damages, and that Titan is gone. The Dreadnoughts are now going to attack. They have six plus two for techni technology, plus one for um, being having there be so many people. So that's going to be another six or better. I'm just gonna roll. Well, we'll roll these. No, we'll roll together. And that's one more damage to the, the Titan. If it gets one more, it's gone. But now it gets to fire back, at least. So it's got an 8, and it's going to go against... Hmm. That's tough. I think it might go against the Dreadnoughts. It can't really... It can't attack the legendary people, so it'll go against the Dreadnoughts. It's two shots. I guess I'll do one. No, no, it's not going to... And I said it was 8 minus 4. Neither of those is going to hit. Um, oh, it should be 9 minus 4. So there was a 5 there. So I think one got a hit. All right. And I wonder, they might have a, they have some funny, or not funny, but some different rules with hits. It might be like it's automatically destroyed. I'm going to check on that real quick. Okay, the rule was each hit does two instead of one. So that's still better. One of the Dreadnoughts is almost destroyed. Maybe the, uh, one of Sunny's Dreadnoughts can take it out. Sunny's Dreadnought has seven, eight. Um, eight against four. So he needs four or better. And then I guess we'll run one at a time. Nope. Nope. That's too bad. Now, uh, Betty Crocker gets to attack with his Dreadnoughts. I think I had these scouts fire when they weren't supposed to, maybe. Yeah, I did, but we won't worry about it. Um, they were only supposed to get the A rating against the fighters. Once the fighters were gone, they should have been able to attack other things. Sorry, but I don't think anything got hurt by it. Dreadnoughts get to fire. They have six, seven against one. Six or better. I guess I should do one at a time. Nope. And... Ah, nope. I was feeling capricious. I would say that those units were gone, but no, I'm not going to. Okay, so the scouts should have been able to fire now, but they fired earlier, so we won't do that. Now it is another turn for the legendary raiders. That's interesting. Well, I don't think he's going to... I think he just wants to get the job done. All right, so we'll do one at the Titan. And this time it's... Sorry, I have to keep figuring it out. Six for attack. Seven for fleet bonus. Eight for being legendary. Eight against three. That's five or better. And that's going to destroy the Titan. And also much of what Hope Sunny has left. And that was one raider, so the others are all going to fire at the Dreadnought. The two, the two Dreadnoughts that are left. And they get... Eight minus three... Or minus four is four. I think I, did, I might have done that wrong with the thing. Oh, well. That's one hit. This is fascinating television. Two more. And one more hit. All right, now, Betty Crocker's Dreadnought's going to attack. They have six plus two plus one is nine. Minus four is five or better. We'll do one at a time since it's damaged twice. They can make a level in between. Yep. And that's going to destroy one of them. And the whole size is six. Six are better and they become skilled. Nope. And one more shot by them. And nope. Okay, now the last remaining Dreadnought gets to go. He might retreat. I think he is going to retreat just so that there's something left. But... <laughs> Oh, actually, he can do Celestial Knight Supercharge. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so he's going to get two attacks. And, I mean, he could retreat, but that's just kind of prolonging the inevitable. I feel like it's pretty inevitable at this point. But maybe not. There's some shipyards here, but yeah, I think he's going to do it. All right, so he gets two shots. I'm going to go one at a time. Can't go against the Legendary Raiders. He's going to do one against the Dreadnoughts there. Hoping to get a hit. He's got seven. Eight. Minus three is five or better. He destroys one. And let's see if he gets a level he's got to get six or better. And he does. He is now a veteran. Good job. Okay, and he gets another shot as a veteran. And this shot... Uh, does he want to keep going against the Dreadnoughts? Because the Destroyers aren't going to really be able to do the rest, and I don't think he's going to have another turn. Uh, I think he's going to go against the Destroyer here. And that's going to be whatever I said before. So now I actually figured it out. Yeah, that's going to be enough. So we lose the Destroyer. 
and he doesn't make a level. All right, now the destroyer gets to act. The destroyer is going to go ahead, and I should clear these off so I don't get confused. I'm going to attack the other destroyer, and that's six, seven against one. We missed. Those destroyers are going to attack this destroyer. They'll do one at a time. Oh, they can attack twice, though. So that's five against one. It's destroyed. Let's we'll see if he was here. There was two of them. Let's see if they make a level. They don't. Okay, now they will... Attacking scouts? Yeah, let's attack the scouts. Let's get them. Five, six. Oh, they're veterans now, right? No. Six against um, one. That's five or better. Pew! Did you make a level? No! Five or better? Got three more attacks because they're charging. They're celestial. No! Roll that one again! No! All right, not so great for him. Um, I think I'll stop it now just so you don't have to watch me roll it out, but I think we can kind of see where this is going. Sonny's Polaris is destroyed. Betty Crocker wasn't unscathed. He got some damage, lost a Dreadnought, a couple of scouts. He maybe had destroyers with him. I don't even remember anymore. Um, I guess we will resolve this one next, because that's the, if we do that one and Betty Crocker is successful, we won't need to do that one. Not that I would mind doing that one, but it would be unnecessary. So let's go ahead and do that one. This could be the end of the game. All right, Battle for Junior's Homeworld. This is going to be a much more even battle, though I didn't know that that other one would be so one-sided. I kind of thought it would be because legendary raiders have fared so well in the past, but I wasn't for sure. We have one elite raider in this one, um, but not a whole lot on Betty Crocker's side. Remember, he pretty much just needs to get through two rounds and have his, tr his uh, transport survive here. Um, one of them is screened, and I'm just going to assume the one that's screened. Screening means that it's blocked. Uh, Junior can't attack it this round um, of combat, but he could potentially next round if he evens up the, num the total number of ships in play. One of them is screened. I'm going to assume that one holds the marines and the gravi gravity armor, and... I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh yeah, yeah. There's like Marines and Gravity Armor and probably some infantry. So yeah, the infantry would be on the one that's that's showing. So if that gets destroyed, those infantry are gone. If the Marines and Gravity Armor land though, we can be assured that they will be successful, I think. Well, I guess there's those um those pesky militia, which could matter. But let's play this out, see what happens. Um the elite raiders will go first. And I think their goal is going to be just to reduce Junior's numbers so that they can keep those transports screened for as long as possible. So the best way to do that would be to go against these elite destroyers here. Well, actually against the skilled destroyers first. Elite destroyers. Skill destroyers. Maybe we'll go against the elite destroyers. No, they're veterans. They're not elite. No, no, they are elite. Yeah. So that would be, they have six, seven for cloaking and attack. And that would be it against them. So they would be going six or better. Here they would go, well, they'll go for these guys first because they go eight or better against them. All right, because they have six, seven, eight, minus one. I think I got that right. Yeah, seven or better. And they failed. Didn't matter who they went against. Now these uh, battleships, they get a plus two. So that's seven. Plus another... One, I think, because they have a special card. Combat sensors, yeah. So that's eight against one. That's seven or better. And they were so successful. Wow. So that's gone. Two or better to go go up a level. They do not. All right, now the base gets to attack. The base can can go against the elite raiders. I think that's what it'll do. Yeah, so it's got eight against one. No, eight against, um not one. Eight against, uh, I forgot, all these guys should be, they're all A, so all these guys are going to get attacked right away. Eight against, um, it's nine against one. No, eight against, yeah, oh, oh yeah, eight against two, sorry. Six or better. And they failed as well. Okay, so now, because they're fearless, they all get to attack first. Sorry, I, I'm a little bumbling here. So these awesome carriers are gonna go, and they have five, six, I believe, because they have this special thing, electronic warfare module. They get a plus one to their attack strength. And they're gonna get another plus one, depending on who they attack against. Hmm. They're gonna try and do the same thing, get rid of numbers. So they're gonna go against the destroyers here. And they get six, seven against one. They failed. Oh, that's too bad. Now these uh, shipyards get to attack. Um, the shipyards will have four, five against one, four better. And I'll roll these as a group because they don't make levels. That's one. Destroyer gone. And another three shots here. And they all failed. Bad rolls for Junior at a very crucial time. Destroyers will do the same thing going against the other destroyers. And they get four plus one is five plus one is six against one is five or better. And I'll, I'll do these one at a time because they can make a level. Two, nope. And three, nope. Really bad. Now, the Enterprise, the Starship Enterprise, which is Betty Crocker's flagship, it's got a six, and it's going to go for that shipyard there. Six against one, that's five or better. And it did it. Pew. Does it make a level? Two or better. It does not. Okay, now the five destroyers, they got five, six, against one, against those shipyards. Failure, one. Success, two. Does it make a level? Success, three. Doesn't make a level. Success four. Doesn't make a level. Failure five. All right, the transports, only one of them showing, and it will go ahead and attack. It's got a two 
and it's one. It's one. Yeah. All right. Um, the scouts, they have four against, uh, do we have double now? Three, eight, ten, twelve versus, not quite. Okay. Four against one. That's three or better. Failed and failed. Okay. We're going to start another round. Um, Junior no longer gets to have all these guys attack in A-class rating, so that's going to be better for Betty Crocker, and things have been going all right for him so far. Um, Legendary Raider, they're still, well, they can screen both the transports, so they're both screened now. Legendary Raider is going to attack, I guess, the shipyard. And it's got six, seven, 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 against one. Six or better. It failed to destroy a shipyard. The, the battle, battle thing succeeded. Two or better? No. All right. Now they have double their opponents, I believe. So they have 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep, they have double. The Enterprise is going to get an additional plus 1, so it's got 6 going for it. Plus 1 is 7. 7 against 1, 6 or better. And it destroyed the final shipyard that Junior had, which helped him get numbers. All right. Now the carrier gets to attack. I might just turn off the camera and roll this out because it seems like it's a foregone conclusion, but Junior's got some strong units left. So the carrier gets to attack. It's got 6, 7, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep trying to whittle away at, uh, at Betty Crocker's numbers. So it's going to go against the Destroyer. 6 or better. Failure. Um... Now the destroyer gets the fleet of five destroyers gets to attack. It's gonna go it goes against this, it gets a minus two, goes against this, it gets a minus three. It'll go against these, minus two. So let's see, they get five, six, seven, minus two. It's five or better. Success? No level. That's the first one. Failure, that's the second one. Success. A level. And what did I say that was? That was the third one or the fourth one? I'll say that was the fourth one, to be kind. That was just the fifth attack. What was it? Six, seven, minus two, right? Yeah, so that was a failure. Now the transports are both screened, so the scouts are going to attack. They have, oh no, the destroyer gets to attack. It's got a five, six. I know this is really fun for you, but it's a momentous occasion. I'm sorry I'm not rendering it better. Um, five, six against one. Going against the destroyers there. And that's going to that's gonna destroy a destroyer. Do or better. No, three or better, actually. I forgot that he has the... Legendary Destroyer. I'm going to go down in infamy. infamy. Scouts could attack it, though. And they have a... Oh, can they attack it? I don't think they can. No, they can't attack it. They have to attack the base. So they got to get a 1. Yeah, I got a 1 at the same time. They both failed. Legendary ra or Elite Raider against the base. 6, 7, 8. Against 3. 5 or better. Failure. Battleship. Failure. Base. Attacking a Destroyer. Success. Enterprise. And it has to attack... It can attack the carrier if it wants to. I think it will. Okay, it's got a six, seven against two, three, four better. Did not get it. All right. Carrier, six, seven against one, six or better. Did it. Boo! Does it become legendary? Three or better. It does not. These last two skilled destroyers here going against um, the carrier. Yes. And that's going to be six, seven minus two. Three is four or better. I'm going to roll at the same time. Both failed. Uh, transports aren't doing anything. Scouts are going to attack the base, and they have to get a one. They didn't. Raider. <laughs> this is really... Oh, shoot! The ground combat should have started by now. Um, I guess we'll just start this round. I guess Betty Crocker was so enraptured in the action they didn't do it. I'm going to place the ground combat units on the, on the track here, and we can do it all simultaneously. Okay, there's a weird sort of rules issue. Um, the militia, you're supposed to get one per colony point of the of the world. Now this is a home world, so does it count as a colony? There, are, There is something that says, less explicitly noted otherwise, it does count as a colony. So that's going to mean there's going to be 20 militia there. Um, so Betty Crocker has to decide whether it's even worth it to uh, invade. He could just keep bombarding the place and probably take the colony that way. I think he might invade though anyway, just, just for fun. If he fails the invasion though, well, those people can't fire on it in, unless the, their troops are off the planet. So, well, I'll just go for it and see what happens. Okay, so it turned out they were all Marines in grab armor on those transports, so that's going to give Betty Crocker still a pretty decent shot, I think, of beating these militia. Um, I don't remember if I already rolled for this round of combat, but I'm just going to start over. I don't think anything of consequence happened if I did. Um, raiders are going to attack the carrier there, and they have to get 6, 7, 8, minus 1, minus 2, 6 or better to damage it. And they do. The carrier has a two. And the BB, um, it's going to get a minus two, three. But it gets a plus three, four. So it's nine minus three is six or better against the carrier. And it failed. That would have been a nice one for it to hit. All right. Um, Enterprise is a plus two, plus one. But that gets canceled out. 
So six minus two is four better against the carrier. Failed. All right, now the carrier gets to attack back. Oh, I didn't have the base of fire. That was wrong of me. The base is going to shoot at the raider, I think. And it's got a seven, eight minus two, six. And it destroyed the raider. Ooh, looking good. All right. Now it's ground combat. We're just doing it all together. The grab armor will attack first. They got six against the infantry's one, five or better. They failed. Um, another one, five or better. They failed. Two marines at seven or better. Six or better. And that destroys both the infantry. Okay. Um, now two more marines, and they're at six or better because they're going against militia now. Actually, I can just now do it in groups. Two. It's going to get rid of two of them. Yeah, this shouldn't be too hard. It doesn't seem like they have a lot of resistance. Okay. Now six more marines against the militia. Six or better. It's going to be another one. Another three marines here. It's going to get rid of another two. Okay. Back to space. Destroyers are attacking. They can't attack the legendary. They're going to attack the carrier. They got six, seven against two, three. So four or better. Failure. Failure. Now, um, juniors destroyers, they have five, six against, I guess I'm going to attack this destroyer here. Six against one. It's five or better. And they failed as well. A lot of failed rolls in this. The transports are now fighting because they use drop ships to drop the people. Um, they pretty much, well, they can't attack these guys. They can attack the carry. They got to roll a one. Nope. Nope. And the scouts, I imagine, they, they don't have to get roll a one. They get a minus two, three. Yeah, they got to roll a one, too. Also against the carrier. They did. They destroyed it. That's exciting. Let's see if they get rewarded for that. So these carriers are four, five, or better. They don't. They don't go up a level. All right. Back. Or, oh, no. Now all these militia get to attack. Shit. Um, 12, 15. 15 rolls against uh, three or better going against grab armor. We do them in pairs of two. We have 15 rolls. Five or better, I said. So that's going to be one grab armor right there. That's two. Four. That's another grab armor. That's a marine. Now they need to get four or better. Two, four. This is going to be six. Nope. Four or better against marines. Eight. Two more marines. Bite the dust. Ten. I said four or better? Or what did I say? Yeah, four or better. Another one. Got a six there. Twelve. These are gone. Fourteen. And then fifteen. All right. They will be closer. All right, back around to another round. Battleship's, battleship goes first. It can only attack the base. Whew, this is closer than I thought. Everyone's kind of down to their last bits here. Uh, six. They, yeah, they still have double. Six. Seven. Six for having double. Plus another two for its attack rating. It's eight plus one more because of its special power. Nine minus three. The six are better to damage the base here. And it failed. So much failure. And Enterprise has six. Seven minus three is four or better. And it also failed. Marines. Six to zero. Let's get rid of two militia. Another roll from the Marines. Another three militia. That's nice for Betty Crocker. Ten more militia left. Five marines. Destroyer attacks. It can not attack. The enemy destroyer has to attack the base. It's got four, five, six, seven. Seven against three, four or better. Roll them both. Oop, that's a damage. Some progress. Okay, now the legendary destroyer is going to attack the non-legendary destroyers. And it's got five, six. Five or better. It did it. it can't become any more legendary. All right, now the transport's going to attack. They have to get a one. Nope. Scouts get to attack. They have to get a one. They're attacking the base. Nope. All right, now the militia get to attack. And they're attacking Marines, and they have to get four or better. That's one Marine. And three militia. One more. I don't know. Six Marines. What did I say? They need to get four or better. They just got rid of three Marines. Dang. Final militia. That got... So the ground invasion failed. That's exciting. So now it's up to the space battle. Uh, Betty Crocker's got to win this. Well, he doesn't have to. I mean, he's probably going to win the game anyway, but to win the game right now, he's got to win this. Um, battleship, seven, eight. It's just eight, right? No, nine, because it's got his bonus. Minus three. Nine minus, yeah, three. Six are better. Damage two. The base gets to attack back. I think it still wants to try to get rid of this dreadnought here. Yeah. Yeah, the space battle is not looking good, but let's try to go against the dreadnought. Not looking good for Junior, that is. Eight versus one. Failed. Um, Enterprise six, seven against three, four or better. 
It did it. The Enterprise took out the base. That was the big bad there. Um, let's see if it makes a level. It needs a seven or better. And it did. A skilled Enterprise. Now the Destroyers against the Destroyer. And it's got to get, it's got six, seven, six, five. Failed. I can't retreat. I gotta assume. Well, there's nowhere to retreat to. Um, it's got five, six. Yes, one. Five or better. Failed. Okay, now the transports. I want the transports to win it. Let's get one. No. I want the scouts to win it. I want the transports to win it. They did it. The scouts got rid of the legendary destroyer. And they did not go up a level. So I'm gonna roll to see if this colony is destroyed. Um, if it's not, I guess I'll have to do the Praxis battle because um, I wonder how, how homeworlds go in terms of damage. If they have these other markers for it. Yeah, so it goes down by fives. All right. After the bombardment, Junior's uh, homeworld got down to five, so one more hit would have taken it. Um, probably would have happened the next turn. Uh, he couldn't produce anything, couldn't really get anything there to defend it. So I'm going to call the game. Betty Crocker is our winner. She's going to, er, he, I'm sorry. But maybe he identifies as female, even though he is biologically male. In which case, we'll say Z. Um, has won the game, and he's going to progress to a, a mighty, mighty... I'm really excited for this. I've, I've been planning this next game. I'm not planning it, but looking forward to this next game. I, I planned it in the, in the sense that I knew that it was coming up uh, for a long time now, uh, since I got the game, really. I'm waiting for a one-on-one -on -one battle in the Peralti leg to finish this off. So it's going to be Betty Crocker versus Pinky in the in the semi-semi-finals, I guess is what you would say. Because the semi-finals are going to be um, Throne World and Time Agent. And then the finals are whatever the special thing is at the end. All right, so that's really exciting. Um, this game, uh, it's a, well, I guess I'll just say a few thoughts on this game because I'm not going to review it. It's been, it's been covered very heavily. One, and I'm going to do these as bullet points, just kind of the bold thoughts, the thoughts that have been bolded in my mind as I play the game. One thought, Space Empires 4X, I think, is a good gateway game to older games. I think um, the rules are kind of written with a more modern mindset, but the game itself, although kind of like cleaned up and updated for the modern, by modern, I mean today's sensibilities, um, definitely harkens back to a lot of older games. So um, I'm going to look at this game as an entry point into older space games, which I have a lot uh, because of some, some sales at local game stores of old space games. Um, bullet point two, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but it's kind of like a, there's a lot of bluffing. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a very complex paper, rock, scissors. Um, a, definitely a, a, a gamey game, I would say more so than a simulation, but it's got some simulative aspects as well, I suppose. It's kind of hard to say. Uh, most of the game scenarios are so balanced to start that it's it's difficult to say that. And the genericness of, of all the, the ship types and the, the powers, even with the Empire Advantages, there's no real story there. The story's created as the game goes on. And it's kind of, a, I think, a well, there, there's different details, but there's it's about this kind of growth. It's about this competition of growth, and so that's the Space Empires 4X. I think it. I definitely probably would prefer to play with others, but it has some problems with playing with others in that there's a there's kind of a learning curve since there's all the secret information. So it's not like I can kind of teach people as we go along. I suppose I could if we didn't really play the game, just do a teaching game. I guess I could do it that way. So I might get this to the table sometime with a group, um, and I think I would enjoy that. Um, but generally, I like to bring bring games to groups that kind of have more more meaning to them than this. Though I think it would be a lot of fun. It's kind of a, a good, like um, kind of the same sort of group you'd play an Ameritrash game with, an Ameritrashy game. Uh, that's just like very whoopy. It's a good whoopy game. Um, in terms of this actual playing, I definitely enjoy it again, and I could see doing it in solitaire again. Um, there, Betty Crocker's victory had to do a lot with my exploration of the game, I think. 
um, and just I didn't you know the different tacks the different players took you know as I explored the game but also a lot to, to luck I used that variable um, setup which made it so that it was very uneven what people had access to and then um, his strategies just happened to work better combined with some luck you know he, he did he definitely things could have gone differently um, I think probably when playing this game you want to attack more than I'm normally inclined to do and I think that probably hindered all the players I don't usually attack so much when I play um, I'm, I'm maybe more of a sunny type player Cross with the Betty Crocker. Well, they're all kind of aspects of how I would play, but I try to make decisions I wouldn't make uh, on their behalf, but they're still kind of this ingrained thing. But a very good experience. Um, this is a game I've kind of lived with for a while. You know, got up in the morning, did economic phase sequences, did it when I had breaks here and there throughout the day. Um, and, I, and I really enjoyed that. It's time to move on to something else. I think it was just the right length. Um, I look forward to seeing you next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament for the final matchup in the Baralti Lake. This one's been a long haul, um, one of the longer hauls, probably the longest in terms of the number of games played, if not the number of actual sessions recorded. Um, I think 7x7 Seven Seven Ages probably has that cup, that trophy hanging on its wall. But this next one is going to be really exciting, so look forward to it. Next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament Baralti Lake 6 coming up. Special surprise game.